Council have any plans to review the scope of which HMOs are within the mandatory licensing policy so that HMOs under three or more storeys are brought within the policy. This may help to alleviate the poor living conditions experienced by some of our most vulnerable people who feel they have no other choice but to accept the poor conditions they are living in when renting from unscrupulous private agents and landlords. Thank you for your question, Teresa. Firstly, I should explain um, to those that are here this evening what this is really about. What is a HMO? Um, a HMO is um, a house in multiple occupation, a home occupied by more than two who are not all, all members of the same family. <coughs> Minimum standards applying to HMOs are set out under the Housing Act 2004, National Regulations and Codes of Practices. So local authorities like us cannot legally re require or enforce on landlords to comply with a different standard. The government published a consultation paper in November last year about changes to the mandatory licensing of HMOs in England and, the propose, and pr is proposing to change the definition of HMOs to bring smaller properties under mandatory licensing, which would be the two floors that I'm sure that you're, you're alluding to now. The consultation ended in December and we await that outcome. However, I can say that as an authority we promote good standards in privately rented accommodation through our landlord accreditation scheme and we would encourage any concerns relating to conditions in private rented accommodation to be brought to the attention of the private housing team at the council. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. Interim, because there's no date set for uh, when the mandatory two-storey um, licensing is going to come in, is whether Thurrock Council will uh, impose their own additional licensing uh, on the two-storey properties, given the poor condition that I've identified with approximately 47 properties in a steel break. with officers on, on many an occasion. Um, and I think that there is very little that we can actually do outside of the law. We have to operate within the guidelines that are set. So um, I think that first, if you do know of anybody that you believe is living in conditions that are not what you expect them to be, that you would either send them to me or send them to a member of the team, and we can get the Will Holmes team to go out and visit them as well as inspecting and holding landlords to account. Um, they could also offer them advice on benefits, making sure that you know, they're, they're getting everything that they're entitled to. This is a, um, a service that is paid for under um, out of the health budget, and it's one that I would encourage you to use. Um, I think that secondly, we need to wait and see what comes out of the consultation. There's nothing much that we can do um, to encourage to do anything outside of that. And we have to hope that really that this government recognises <coughs> that there are unscrupulous landlords out there. And so I would hope that they do bring them in line with us as um, the private landlords should be brought in line with social um, landlords. We wouldn't get away with it as, as the council, so why should landlords? And so I think that once we've seen what actually comes out of it, if it doesn't go far enough, I would encourage you yourself to write to our MP to, for her to put better pressure on this government. She obviously has better contacts in the government than we ever could. And us as a council should also write. You know, so I think we need to wait. There's nothing that we can do. Um, it, if there was, like, you would have to literally go street to street consult with every resident in that street on every HMO that's in there and then we would still need to go to the government for, for agreement that we could um, add those licences there. 